Hi guys, it's Ben here. How are you all doing? Welcome back to another video. It is the third preview of this pre-season campaign. Liverpool go to Bury on Saturday afternoon after beating Tranmere 3-2, after beating Chester 7-0. But of course, uh, the win over Tranmere was not what dominated the headlines that night. It was what happened with the goalkeeper. I spoke about it after the game uh, and since then there's been a bit more news coming out and it looks like Danny Ward is finally going to get his chance. Um, how do you feel about that? I mean, I, I really liked Danny Ward when I first saw him play for the under 21 as it was back then, um, a few years ago. Um, and I still, I've, I've got no reason to have changed my mind because I've just not seen the guy play for Liverpool, uh, apart from that one game he played last year against Leicester. Um, and obviously had a great time uh, in the Scottish League, had a great time at uh, Huddersfield. And it, it can't get much worse than Karras at the moment because um, Karras might well be a better goalkeeper than Simon Mignolet and Danny Ward, but at the moment, out of the three, he's probably the person that you just least want to see in goal for Liverpool, just because even he just looks like he's, he's a beaten man. Um, I just look at his body language, everything that he does, he just, I've not seen him smile. Like, he's just not enjoying himself, he's scared about what's going to happen next, there's ironic cheers in the crowd. Um, and he's made another howler against against Tranmere. The, the thing in the warm up is it is the warm up. Who it, 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 it really cares? But even that, you know, it gets blown out of proportion. And if it was any other keeper and someone dropped it in the warm up, it wouldn't matter. But because of it, it's him, um, yeah. So Danny Ward to get his chance. Um, obviously, he's been playing half of the games in pre season anyway. He's playing half. Karras playing half. Uh, with Menelay still being at the World Cup. Um, so it doesn't really matter there, but I guess as we get closer to the start of the season, we might start to see uh, some more clues in terms of who's going to play in goal. Um, so yeah, it, it came out in the echo today that Danny Ward's going to get his chance. Don't know how long that chance is going to last, and I don't know if it's um, just a, a brief thing, you know, or whether Jurgen literally will not go into the transfer market because he's looked around and thought there's nobody here that I'm happy to spend my money on, I could spend it on other things like Neville Fakir, Shakiri, who we're going to sign and anything else that he might want to do. I don't think there's going to be many more incomings other than those two attacking players and potentially a goalkeeper. Um, I think we're okay in defence, the midfield's obviously pretty stacked now. So yeah, a keeper, I mean, there's no new li names linked, there's n absolutely none. So Alisson's not going to happen by the looks of things, All Black's obviously not going to happen. Um, everyone's given me comments about Donna Donnarumma, that's not even been mentioned. Um, Sillerson's been ruled out, uh, the Lazio keeper's been ruled out, Nick Pope's been ruled out. Um, people talking about Kasper Schmeichel, I don't think there's any interest there. So, I mean, honestly, we're, we're, we're scraping the barrel, there's nobody left. So Danny Ward, I mean... Would you not rather see him get his chance? He's a young guy that's worked hard. He was so patient last season. I mean, we've got no idea what happens in training. Everyone talks about John Atkeberg. I've never seen the guy take a coaching lesson in my life. Um, so I honestly, you know, I, I, I'm not able to make a judgment on that. Uh, but I think it's right that Wall gets, gets a chance because, you know, why not? We, we want to make it seem like you know, even if you are third in the pecking order in a certain position, you keep working hard and the guys above you start to drop a level, or in Carrier's case, many levels, then you've got, you've got to be ready to step in and you've got to get your chance. It's a great example to set. And, you know, Nick Pope got his chance at Burnley and now I think he's really, you know, established himself as maybe the number one, or if not, his value's shot up and he's in the England squad. Um, it happens to goalkeepers, you know, they, they get their chance, they come in. I mean, if you look at the top six we obviously have got the worst one, even if it is Danny Ward. Um, but if he's a safe pair of hands, if, if if it takes the attention off of the goalkeeping situation and we can just get by without having to worry about it, even if he doesn't make any world class saves, he's not gonna he's not gonna actively win us points. If he can not lose us points, then I'm happy with that for the time being anyway. Maybe in January Allison's price drops or something becomes available, you know, Timo Courtois or, or whatever, you know. Um, but Danny Ward's going to get his chance, so let's see. Let's see what happens in this goalkeeper pantomime at Berry. But before I get into that, uh, I'm going to tell you about this app. Now, they've reached out to me. Um, I don't want to be just pr promoting any better apps for you guys because I don't want to irritate you, but um, the offer that these guys, 888, are giving um, is obviously a lot better than... 
um, anything else that I've seen this summer for the World Cup. So there's obviously a few days after the World Cup, there's the final to come. You all want to have a bet on the World Cup final. Uh, those of you that gamble, obviously, not, not, not those, those of you 18 or under, or, or under 18. But those of you that like a bet, if you use 888 and you haven't already got an account with them, if you bet £10 or more, you'll get £30 in free bets uh, extra. So here we go, new players. Um, bet £10, get £30 in free bets. Simple as that. Or if, or if you're not living in the UK, it's uh, €10 Euros for, a t for €30 Euros free bets. I mean, that is, they're, they're, they're tripling your stake and matching it. You know, I mean, normally you get matched deposits, matched first deposits on a betting app, but here, um, if you click on the link um, in my description, that's the only way you can get it. So don't go on the desktop website because that won't work. It has to be through the app, and it's an iTunes only app, uh, and the link is in my description. So if you're on a laptop, just go onto your mobile, and you, if you want to do it, then just go onto mobile, click the link, it will take you to the app. Um, and I mean, there's no catch. It's bet £10, get £30. So let's have a look at what you can bet on. Um, all the sports are on there, so whatever you fancy. Uh, so football, I imagine, is what most of you are going to be interested in. Uh, can we get to the World Cup? Yes, we can. The World Cup. So Belgium versus England there and France, Croatia. So if you have a little punt on, let, let, you know, Croatia to beat uh, France, 15-4, to 4, uh, what would £10 on that return? So that can win you £47.50 if you think Degsy's going to go all the way. Uh, do that and you get yourself 30 quid in free bets. So if you want, you can, you can put it on... Uh, some other games, or, or or you can kind of hedge your bets, whatever you want to do. It just, I mean, if you know how to gamble, you can probably make that money back quite easily, you know. And then you've got free bets to, to, to mess about with. So there you go. Definitely recommend that. Thanks to Rate for reaching out to me. Uh, I hope you understand that this is a great um, opportunity. I'm not just going to shove any betting app down your throat. Not not one that's not got a great offer for you guys. If you do enjoy gambling and you're 18 plus, then check it out. Um, that's all I've got to say about that. Let's get back to talking about Liverpool. Uh, and John Matip is back this weekend, um, as is Virgil van Dijk. But Gini van Alden picked up a knock in training, so he's not going to feature by the looks of things. Other than that, everyone else, as you'd expect, uh, will be in action. The players I'm looking at, um, in terms of impressing, I mean, Harry Wilson has just signed a new deal. Uh, this summer, I mean, the plan might already be to loan him out. And, I mean, he didn't even know at Chester what the plan was. So, um as, as I sort of overheard him say after the game. So, I mean, whether that's been quickly decided or whether it's, look, sign a deal and, you know, we're going to back you for a season, whether you're here or elsewhere, it might just be asset protection, you know. Um, but I'm looking for a big performance from him. Shea Ojo, likewise. Uh, Rafa Camacho, likewise. I mean, you know, I, I don't know where their futures lie. Probably not here this season, um, even though Shea Ojo is hardly, you know, and under 18 anymore, he's, he's got to be looking to push towards that first team, but probably still, unfortunately for him, a long way to go. Um, Daniel Sturridge, obviously, can he build on that great performance at Chester? I'd like to see it. Um, Origi and Solanke, it's still pretty much uh, an important time for them to impress. Um, neither of them have scored so far, um, and yeah, you want to see a bit more from Origi in particular. I think Solanke's probably the safer of the two, he's only just joined, he's younger and he did play well last season, albeit he didn't really look like scoring until that very last game, which completely changes everyone's perception on how good a season he had, by the way. If he doesn't score that goal against Brighton, and he goes for that whole first campaign without scoring a goal, then it's a different conversation, but now he's got a bit of momentum behind him, even if it is just that one goal, uh, and people probably do want to see him stick around. So hopefully him and Origi, uh, whether they play together or not, can, can uh, light up the Berry game. Uh, Ryan Kent, again, I mean, last preseason I thought he was superb. Um, this, this one he's doing okay. Um, he's got Andy Robertson playing just behind him, and they, they linked up really well uh, at Tranmere. So, you know, be nice to see him feature again. Um, you know, so that's pretty much all the, all the interesting little bits. I mean, we, we know what to expect from the Lana, Cater, Fabinho, um, you know, Matip coming back, Van Dijk coming. I Everyone, every all the senior players like that that were here last season, you would think are safe. I, I can't think of anyone that we've been looking to let go. I mean, there have been r rumors about Gini van Aldem and Fenerbahce. I mean, I I could just can't see a scenario at all where we look at uh, getting rid of him. The Lana with all these midfielders being in the club now, but I mean, some of them aren't even going to be fit for the start of the season or money time to bed in. So at least another season out of him. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, leave it, leave a comment with your thoughts on who you think might be in danger this preseason and who you think might break through. Uh, ben Woodburn's obviously been playing uh, these early couple of games, so what can he kind of do to get in Klopp's head? We'll see, we'll see. But all we can hope for is a win and no controversy in goal. And it would be nice to get a bit of steer as to who Klopp's leaning towards. So if Ward plays more minutes than Karras, maybe we'll kind of. Uh, Maybe we'll kind of know where we stand a bit more. But there we go. One team that does know where it stands is England. Uh, I'm not sure how all of you guys feel about the England national team, but they have been knocked out of the World Cup, as you'll know by now, by Croatia, uh, the game that happened last night. It was a very tense game. It wasn't a thriller, but obviously with it being World Cup semi-final and such a tight game, it was always going to be one goal either way. Um, it was still an enthralling watch and obviously very nerve-wracking for those England fans. Uh, and it's sad. It's sad for, for the likes of Henderson and Trent. Um, and there's some other likeable young players in there that have played really well. I mean, it was quite hard watching Trippier, you know, in tears off the pitch. Nobody wants to see that. Um, but, you know, Dale Lovren, Dale Lovren does it again. He was superb in the Champions League run and in the final. Um, he's had his moments in this tournament, but I thought... He got so much better as the game went on yesterday. I thought by, by the end of it, he, just, he was so comfortable against Harry Kane, who I thought was dreadful, by the way. But Lovren obviously contributes massively to Kane's disappointing performance. And yeah, can he, can he bring it home for, for himself and his country, Dan Lovren? Um, I think France are massive favourites. Uh, I think they're something like 4-7 to seven to win the trophy. I think even that is quite, quite generous. I, I, I probably have them shorter than that, to be honest. I think... They're just the perfect team defensively. That that solid base in midfield. Pogba's was actually been really good. Kante, obviously, you know what you get. And then and Bap, Griezmann, and I mean I've not rated Giroud too much this tournament, but he's he's effective in in, in certain senses. So I've got France to win that. In, in the final, I'm not really looking forward to. To be honest, it's quite a disappointing one. I mean I don't know. I'm just not I'm just not really a big France fan. And Croatia aren't exactly a fair team. Although they've got so much quality in that midfield and. You do kind of pull for them because they are plucky underdogs in a sense, and obviously the day and offering factor. So, let me know your predictions for that. And England, if you care, are they going to be Belgium and finish the uh, tournament on a high? Will there be rotation there? Who knows? But it's been a great World Cup, and yeah, bring on the Euros, I suppose. But we've got plenty of football in between then, including this Saturday. I'm going to stop myself mid flow there because just as I was editing this, so that was all filmed about half an hour ago. Just as I was editing this, um, John Percy has tweeted. Uh, that Sh Shakiri is going to have his medical on Friday. So tomorrow, as I say this, probably today, as you're watching this, um, Shakiri is going to be a little player very, very soon. Won't see him at Berry, I'm sure, but yeah, he's going to be there, and I'm sure he's going to come on the US tour. Uh, maybe even Blackburn. So yeah, Shakiri, Liverpool player, to very soon anyway. Assuming there's going to be no issues like there was with Fakir, Shakiri is going to be a Liverpool player. How do you feel about that? Uh, I did an Instagram live yesterday when Paul Joyce tweeted about it anyway. So. My thoughts are kind of the same as most people's. It is what it is. I like him as a player. Good impact sub. We'll discuss it further another time. But Shakiri Medical soon. Back to what I was talking about. Very best of Liverpool. I'm going to be there vlogging the game as usual. So make sure you tune in after the game for that. I'll be blogging as well. Um, so if you're not following me on Medium, then please do that. Of course, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook as well. I'm really active on Instagram at the moment. Um, come and ask me a question. Come and say hello. Whatever you want to do. I'm always there uh, and always interacting with you guys. And of course, subscribe here if you haven't already. Um, hopefully most of you have. And if you haven't, do it now because we are going on a big journey this season as Liverpool win their 19th league title. Don't quote me on it. <laughs> See you next time.